Welcome back, everyone, to ESA Winter 21. We're raising money for Alzheimer Fondin. Links to donate can be found below the stream. I'd like to thank our sponsors, Koei Tecmo Europe with Neo 2, Complete Edition, Twitch, and ViewSonic for sponsoring the event. Now it's time for Hypnotics with... We got Unearthed, Trail of Ibn Battuta. Tell us about Unearthed. Oh, I can I can say a lot about Honor. It is it is quite the game, but uh, before before I get onto the game, I'll I'll say hello. I'm Hypnotics. Um, for whatever reason, I picked up this game. You it might ring a bell with you. You might see it on various top tens. You might see it on some clickbait sort of journalism and clickbait videos and that sort of thing. Because this game got a whopping nine out of ten. I mean, nine out of a hundred on Metacritic. One of the worst rated games ever, and uh, we're actually running the remastered version for PC. The original PS3 one came out early 2013, and uh, bearing in mind, in sort of time frames, uh, GTA uh, 5 came out the same year that this did. Just, just keep that in mind when we play it. But um, I can do a lot of talking, but I've also got somebody else who can do a lot of talking with me. So, three go. Hello, everybody. Hope you're having a great ESA. Hope you're having a great day. I most certainly am, and what a way to round it off. And Crumb looked like a lot of fun, and I believe Prince of Persia is going to be a lot of fun after this. But we are going to go into on Earth and show you what the the world of a of, well, we're going to be in Africa in this game, and show you how this is much more than an uncharted ripoff. So we are going to start a new game. We're going to go easy, and we'll pick manual, and our time will start in three. Two, one, go. Now, you're going to see me skipping a lot of cutscenes. A lot of these we can't skip. The ones that are in-game, but the cinematics we can skip. And uh, I'm going to I'm gonna play some of the cinematics because they are quite the marvel of 2013 technology. But uh, the opening stage is absolute hell because we have hints all over the shop that we have to keep on mashing spacebar so every time you hear a little twinkle that is a <laughs> that is a hint coming up and it immediately stops us in our tracks and so does that gun's hitbox supposedly so we want to hit that guy get him out of the way and this is where we learn about most of the mechanics they are by no means complicated uh you could probably figure out all of this without needing it at all but we find out that our surroundings can help us a lot in this game and we make our way through. So, as you can see, our main character, Faris, he is uh, he's got an injury to his shoulder. But this doesn't stop. Uh, the absolute unit going against this very dour man in his, in his purple shirt and suit. And yet again, another moment where we, uh, we have to look at the controls, which are fairly self-explanatory. You're going to hear a lot of mouse clicking because this is very much a case of just spam the buttons and hope that you win. Which we do, eventually. I'm just going to take a sip. So we have made it through the back rooms. On, Very interesting hotel. And you might be wondering, what's what's at the end of these double doors? Who's Danya? Well, this cutscene will hopefully do a little bit of explaining. But, uh, of course, the, the injury is still there. Very intense. What's all of this? What's that gesture that that man did? What would you do if you were him? What would you do if you were me? Oh, funny that he should say that. If we were him, we would skip this cutscene. So um, I'm gonna hold down E. Hopefully, skip the. Uh, hip, hippy. Let's get, okay, I think my keyboard might not be working. Hip. Oh, okay, it's good. It's good. Okay. It's good. Thank goodness. Ooh, ooh, facing the wrong way. Secret and now we are on to the next part of the game. Now, this was three wow. weeks earlier, and three go, what's going on here? Well, welcome to the ruins of GameStop after the stocks have crashed. We're out here, and our goal is to find four discs of uh, demo games that were unfortunately never released. And uh, not looking at Valve or anything, but I do believe that one of these was uh, Half-Life 3. Excuse me. Uh, possibly could see a, a new portal, maybe even new Team Fortress. Who knows? Imagine. Could never be Valve. Not even in the year 3021. So we have our first case of a menu warp. So we find ourselves back on the ground instead of having to maneuver some ladders, and we go on to our next piece of lovely jank maybe mechanics. 
the the beautiful climbing. You can see he's just it's effortless for Faris. Wonderful. Absolutely lovely. Another demo disc up here. And the camera's gonna go all funky. Gonna pan away and then come back to us, and then we find our last disc in this pot. Very nice. So what a well I mean we're collecting all these discs through go, but like why why? What what use do they have to us? Well, uh, if you do place them into these, uh, into this sort of fountain, as we see uh, Hibby doing now, legend has it that it will summon Gabe Newell. Nah, I'm just kidding. It's um, going to open a door that allows us to progress through to the uh, deeper sections of this uh, temple, and I'm gonna drop out uh, while Hibby explains a little bit more about this game. So I am gonna, I'm gonna, because I. Sometimes, sometimes I can be serious so if, I, if I want to. Um, we are actually finding treasure that is linked to Ibn Battuta. Ibn Battuta was a famous traveller who, as this game will like to make out, he travelled twice the distance of Marco Polo. And uh, we are going to be travelling a very short distance to see see what we can make of his uh, of his tricks. So. We have to pick up that torch there, otherwise an invisible wall will block us from progressing. We do a little shimmy across here, but if we press E, we can break out of that animation and go a little bit faster. Donnie's going to try and scare us with some funny ghost noises, but, uh, but we're better than that. We have a little balancing act on this beam, and yet another <laughs> hitbox that we have to mash spacebar to get through. Then we put that down because we don't need it, and we see if we can skip an animation here. We don't, but now the it's it's uh -oh. stop hammer time, but we don't stop at all because the hammers are of no threat to us at all. So a nice forward roll there. Let's see if you can get some good border RNG. They may look very imposing, but believe it or not, we can get hit by them and not die. So. It's a uh, yeah. It's definitely it's some interesting, some interesting collision in this game. Now our next couple of tasks are to collect daggers to open the door to the treasure. So we are going to use our monkey skills that Darnia speaks about to get past these dart traps. We can afford to take one hit. But uh, hopefully we'll be avoiding that if we just take a little pause there. Lovely stuff. Ooh. Ah, I didn't quite make that jump. That's tedious. So the camera very much likes to battle with the player. So quite often, just nothing, nothing will go our way. I guess if I'm repeating what I'm doing, have we got anything that uh, the host would like to say? Don't look down. Absolutely. We have a couple donations here. A five dollar donation from Ben in Sweden, who says, "Good luck, Hibby, with unearthed. I hope the game doesn't let us down and the final boss doesn't desert you." <laughs> Very nice. I want to hear more about then. that boss deserting you after this one too. We have another five dollar donations from uh five dollars from Cole twenty four who says, "Hey Hypno, slow down! I can't read the hints that fast." <laughs> <laughs> Three game. Now is your time to shine. Look at this. What is this gameplay? Welcome to Fast and Furious Egyptian Drift. Our goal here is to take this RC car and use it to activate a platform uh, coming out of the side there and you'd think that we'd have to do this a couple more times but thanks to the um, developers paying extra close attention to the way that we jump we can just skip it and we usually do skip it but it turns out that the game didn't want us to skip skip it that time we're gonna try it one more time and if it doesn't work then we will do what they intended I know Speedrunners doing things that developers intended. So um, let's see if we can make this jump just one more time. Those pharaohs yeah, there we go. Nice. Clean Very first nice. time. Very nice. So another menu warp, which brings us right in front of the door that we want to use to find out the tr what treasures are held within. So a quick couple taps of E. We get into this very sort of. Well, very well. lush chamber. I'd like to know how untouched supposedly it's been, but uh, here we are. So we have another cutscene that we want to skip, and we move on to our second fight. We had our very lavish man in his suit and his purple shirt. Now we have the uh, the discount uh, Vin Diesel to fight. 
which uh, he seems to be going down quite easy to start off with, which is nice. We're getting, we're, we, we, ah, no. well, he's coming back, he's coming back kicking, and we're going to come back kicking too. So just a couple more kicks, and he's out of there. And now we've got a bit of a, we've got a bit of a challenge facing us. So we've got to go back through the temple that we've just come through, but uh, something, something here is going to be challenging us a little bit. Ooh, that's nice camera. I need cover. I just saw. He's over there. So these gunmen. Here we go. What can you tell me about these gunmen? Well, I can tell you one thing. Uh, around half of these gunmen uh, seem to have taken their academy training at the same academy that the uh, stormtroopers from Star Wars: A New Hope that were there training from. As a lot of them don't know how to aim a gun correctly. Uh, some of these we will have to take out, but some of them we can just use right. and we want to play it safe around the hammers this time round. Then we have a little sneak attack from this man with a shotgun, which we can get through easily. Hopefully we can skip this plank section by jumping over, and we did! Yes, that has been giving me a bit of grief. Frugo can testify to that. That's very so nice to get can. down. So now we were doing what we were doing earlier and breaking out of our little sort of ledge walking animation at the right time. Taking out this guy. When he wants to be taken out. Uh, excuse me. Headshots are usually supposed to be instant kill. There we go. So we've taken those guys out and we have our token Metal Gear Solid, our stealth section coming up. So, everybody quiet. We're gonna be we're gonna take this guy out with a loud headshot <laughs> and we're gonna try and run through the temple whilst we're being absolutely peppered by bad guys and at the moment it's looking like we might take a death but we've got to take this guy out and see if we have a clear run to the end we might be taken out we might die we can avoid this guy with a shotgun and we did hey we made it through very nice and then we have another cutscene to skip and uh you might wonder well wow, how did we get away so easily well now we move on to our next fight and uh I don't think there are many obvious comparisons with the uh, famous actors that we can have this time around. You had an idea, but the goatee didn't quite fit it for you. What, what, who was it, Frugo? Yeah, I think that you uh, mentioned that it looked like a discounter uh, version of me, but I uh, humbly, de <laughs> humbly, humbly declined that offer. Yeah. Just didn't think the uh, beard was for me. I think that looks like Teej, actually. Shout out to Teej. Shout out to Teej. <laughs> <laughs> So we have another cutscene to skip, and now after all of that intense gameplay, we are we're gonna appreciate the finer things in life. So three go, I'm sure you've we we've organised this before. So I hope that you've got a brew with you, everybody. I do indeed. Join us. We are having a uh, well. I'm gonna have a black coffee. I don't know what three go is treating himself to, but uh, yes, in true English fashion. Four thumbs up. I believe you say. I'm gonna do some very good, very good pouring action. So it may look very intense this uh, this part of gameplay, but we can actually afford to do literally nothing <laughs> in easy <laughs> mode. We are under attack from all around, but it's it's quite easy. So um, I mean, Bradfield, if there's anything that you'd like to say in this uh, this little moment. Oh, absolutely, and. Love the tea set, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> we are... Um, again, folks, just want to let everyone know we're raising money for Alzheimer Fondin, Swedish national fundraising organization focusing on Alzheimer's disease and other dementia-related diseases. Uh, Alzheimer Fondin's aim and purpose, to increase fundraising to the benefit of scientific research in order to find a cure for Alzheimer's disease. Everyone, thank you so much for all of your donations. Everyone... Uh, Every donation, big and small, is going to a great cause, so thank you so much. And uh, we do have a $50 donation right now from Jason AT. Thank you for $50. Says, don't mind me, just sliding into donate for FF7 remake incentives. Go roll it. Very that must be Thank you so much. And then after all of this intense gameplay where we didn't have to do anything. I think, 3 you fancy a game of Game of Pong? Quick Game of Pong? 
Uh, well, you know, I'm gonna thrash you, but why not? All right, everybody. I'm gonna be the player on the right, and we're gonna we're gonna hand three go three go this L. So, uh, okay, okay, that's that's not there a great go. start. Oh no, not again! You've got to at least try. Three go. This is ESA. Okay, we are we are skipping this. No, no best of five for you. Too good. Uh, sore loser. But after that intense Welcome game of Pong, Marco, you're right, Brad Field. <laughs> oh my god! I just, I love the bonus content you provided for us. <laughs> I know, I know. We have got to make up for what this what this game doesn't provide. No, what am I talking about? That's that's all what the uh, developers put in, of course. Um, so we are the now developer intended. <laughs> exactly, exactly. That's what speedrunning is about, just breaking things. So. We are. We have moved from the temples of Egypt, and we are now in the streets of Morocco. And I believe we actually have a tour guide on commentary. So, three go. Do you? Do you happen to have any Morocco facts that you can hit us with? I do indeed, actually. Um, sticking on the theme of uh, ESA and Europe in general, I bet you didn't realize that Morocco is only eight miles away from the European border. That's a quite an interesting one to uh, put in perspective. I've got another one here that um, says that in Morocco, Friday is Couscous Day in the same way that I believe we have uh, roast dinners in the uh, UK on Sundays. A lot of us do. Uh, in Morocco, they eat tasty. couscous on Friday. Very nice. And in fact, actually, you can see some incredibly detailed couscous in this market. And speaking of roasts that Frigo was on about, we, uh, we have a chicken here with the force field of a demigod. We can't get past it easily. He's really putting in a fight, so uh, we have to we have to make sure we don't disturb. We've got to we, we can't wreck this guy's vibe, you know. So we have got to keep going on this arduous trail mission. Every time that we go up and downstairs, we gain a little bit of ground on our trailees. So we might be able to get ahead of them in this little archway, but uh, I don't think we'll be able to because of the, just the absolute unit that was that chicken and its hitbox. So we are finding ourselves at this ginormous door and we will be progressing onto the next stage of our trail mission, which feels like it goes on forever. <laughs> Would you care for another Morocco fact or two? Oh, go on, everybody. Look at that Pepsi can, just quickly. I'm sure Pepsi had nothing to do with this game, but lo and behold, it was here. But yes, I do have a couple more Morocco facts. Um, in Morocco, it is actually considered impolite to handle food with the left hand and to say no to meat if it is offered at a meal. And I do apologize for any uh, vegans or vegetarians in the chat. That's just how it be. That's just how it be, I guess. My uncle mm. used to own a store in Got another one here saying, uh, in Morocco, really traditionally, um, the heart isn't actually used to, to be the symbol of uh, Sadly, love. It's actually the liver in Morocco. Oh, that's quite quite ironic. At the start of this, I was doing a heart hand symbols, saying thank you to uh, thank you to the sponsors and uh, everybody donating. So maybe. I don't know. I don't know whether I can do the shape of a liver with my hands, so uh, <laughs> I don't think I'm going to try. So um, we are we are coming near to the end of our trail mission. Oh, Just listen to the game for a second. You might hear an audio cutout. There we go. Quick audio cutout. We are at Akram's Cafe, and in fact, actually, three go. Is there is there another fact that you could tell us about maybe cafe coffee in in, uh, in Morocco? Right. I think I have something uh, similar. Uh, the national drink of Morocco is actually mint tea. So for any fans of uh, mint tea, that one's uh, for you. Very nice. We're we're letting this cutscene play out because the animations in this game are top tier. You can see our main characters really, really digging it, and even even the even the extras in the background are very well done. So we're gonna skip that one. We saw we got to see some lovely animations, but we've we've got to keep on going, you know. Quite some honestly, more trailing, very it's very slow paced, but your reputation I believe it's a speed run. You two <laughs> Allegedly, that if, if the rumors are to be be believed, it is a speed run. So whilst we've got our tour guide here, whilst we are roaming the well, not streets, it seems like temples of Morocco. Is there anything else that Frigo can hit us with? Some more facts. Well, I believe I have a one or two more left for you. Uh, for anybody who shops at uh, the shopping chain Tesco in the United Kingdom, 
Uh, the majority of Tesco's tomatoes actually comes from Morocco, so if anybody was wondering where you get your tomatoes from, now you know. Lovely. Lovely stuff. So we are very much near the end of this. Everything is going to get all intense again, so keep an eye out. And uh, So we're going back to this guy's flat to see documents about Ibn Battuta, because we are learning more as we go on. His diaries, and uh, as you can see from the subtitles. We are now going to find ourselves in an in-person chase sequence. So we're going to skip this cutscene, there's nothing particularly noteworthy of it. And now we are in a rooftop chase sequence. So that poor guy gets thrown into his own own house. We are going to try and do a little bit of sequence breaking around here. We can't quite do it, but uh, the game will rubber band as much as it can attempt to. We're grabbing on to thin air there and jumping over it. Lovely and climbing up here very slowly. Any chance that you think you might have to catch, to gain ground on this guy, you can't. So you just gotta accept that it's gonna be quite slow, this one. So now this is an in-game cutscene, we can't skip this. So we, uh, we get to see some lovely animations. Make sure you keep an eye on this guy's, uh, this guy's weapon. You can see he's got a knife, very dangerous. Um, he's looking very imposing. What's he gonna do? Well, uh, we, we hit him with the, whole, with the old knee to the chest, and uh, that actually makes knives disappear. So uh, make sure make sure you keep that for reference in the future. We are going to be doing the same strategies for the other boss fights, just try and kick this guy a lot. And um, I think we'll, we'll do better with our kicks than his, as his... Uh, if you look at his, uh, his shoes, they look more like he's just wearing a pair of socks to run around Morocco in. So... Uh, I think we should be able to dispose of him quite easily. Again, you'll hear some lovely, some lovely mouse ASMR, and we've disposed of him. Another cutscene that we're going to skip, but you'll hear some some interesting voice acting before we change it over. And now we are on to the another stealth section. So you can see a ladder over there in the building that we're moving on to. In the original version, you did have to do that and avoid police in a uh, more sort of Metal Gear Solid fashion, but because you can't die from falling down there, you can just move on to the next section. So all of the tropes that have been taken from okay, Uncharted and better games, what one is going to come up here? Well, I think 3Go, 3Go can put it very nicely for us. Yes, well, uh, you saw Fast and Furious uh, Egyptian Drift earlier on. Welcome to Fast and Furious Morocco Drift. Uh, the goal here is to avoid the police um, for a set amount of time. And one thing, well, a couple things, actually, that I'd uh, <laughs> like you to um, point out so, uh, or keep an eye on is, uh, number one, mean, the uh, skillful um, the handling of the police cars here what by the Moroccan now? police. And number two, the, the way that this map is laid out, can. because uh, if you actually I'll notice, it's a uh, never-ending uh, loop. Of a map. Yeah, I'll do a bit more driving around it because, uh, yes, lo and behold, <laughs> uh, you'll have a very great sense of deja vu. And also, the horns of the NPC cars are very amusing. Uh, so, I'm going to try and run into some, some passive cars. Um, I'm sure they won't mind. <laughs> they sound very <laughs> funny. Um, and then we'll see if we, can, if we can taunt the police a little bit more. We've got an incredibly accurate speedometer in our top right and we also have a almost Simpsons hit and run esque uh, bar for damage that we get from the police so we've just got to avoid them but generally we can just twist them around in circles and it's no worries they're trying their best and uh, one awesome. more thing actually to uh, point out is that if you pay close attention to some of the uh, NPC cars you'll notice that the front set of wheels don't actually seem to be working and uh I'm not sure if that's because of a lack of car mechanics in this specific area of Morocco, but uh, for anybody at home, I do not advise that you drive your car with only uh, two two working wheels. Yeah, that sounds like wheel lock, and that's not very good. So yeah, there we go. There's an example. Although actually, they've managed to managed to make it look rather convincing that time around. But uh, getting around the police nice and easy. You might be wondering, well, with an infinite map, how on earth do you finish this <laughs> this level in this game? We are waiting for a, for a cue when the music will finally fade out. 
and it will show us our ending cutscene. Where exactly did you get your driving license, young man? So uh, we are asked. Take note of this as well. Um, our main character is asked it's where he got his driving down. license from, and uh, they have an intense moment in about uh, whether they're going to make it out in time. The music is building up. We are reaching the climax. We are going to be very soon coming up on time. I will give a three, two, one. Not yet. Everybody's getting intense. Three, go. Will we make it out? Oh, I don't know, man. It's very close. These police, right man, on you, your tail. You've got to, you've got to hold me. You got to hold me. Will we make it? The music's coming up, and then that is time in three, two, one. Time. Oh, GG. There we go. So after supposedly Faris, the main character, was driving the car, no, our I'm a rock and mate was uh, was at the wheel the whole time. So um, these guys are planning their escape. Uh, we have now got all of the items that we need to. Actually, no, they just said that the diaries are gone. Ignore me. I obviously know, don't know enough about this game. But um, yeah, so these guys are in the back, driving off to the next adventure, um, episode two, which actually. It did end up getting developed, but it went by a different name. So uh, after this cutscene, you will get to see what happened with that. But uh, yes, that was all of the gameplay of Unearthed. Let's see where these lot are headed off to. Keep an eye on the the shot of outside of the car in this in this little section. You can see that they don't turn the corner and they are headed straight for that building. But here we are, everybody. Uh, it might surprise you to find out that GTA San Andreas was actually the successor to this game. And if it's a game that you're familiar with and that you enjoy, it is something that is going to be coming up on ESA near the end of the marathon. Joshimas is going to be rocking this game and it is going to be a whole load of fun. Ooh, nice voice crack. It's going to be a whole load of fun. There we go. <laughs> oh my goodness, what a surprise. <laughs> Did you not know? Did you not know? Rockstar, yeah. I thought it was a uh, would, commonly known fact. <laughs> Shows I've been living under a rock. Indeed. So we've got one last cutscene that I want to play out because um, it speaks to you lot. Because uh, I want to say thank you very much, ESA, for having this run on. It's incredibly silly, and I think Frigo and I have had a lot of fun. And. Uh, Everybody, make sure that you Being keep great. on donating. It's been a lot of fun. And also a big thank you to 3 go for helping me out on comms, being our tour guide. If you're interested in his voice or anything that he does, he speedruns <laughs> Pokemon and Sonic and all of the cool games. So he is 3 go Statistical on Twitter and Twitch. And if you enjoyed my silly antics, uh, then I'm Hypnotics and I'm on Twitch and I'm on Twitter. And... Stick around for Prince of Persia, because that is going to be a riot of a time. Bradfield, it's all yours. Thank you very much, Hypnotics. Thank you very much, uh, Three Goat as well. Thank you for the commentary, the amazing run, uh, showing us Unearthed. All right, everybody, after the break, we'll be switching to Prince of Persia with Eraser. Stay tuned, and keep the donations coming. They've been helping out so much. <laughs> 